Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with the Honorable Jean Charest. He is running for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. Jean, just before the break, we were talking a little bit about uh, access to labor stock, uh, labor mobility, uh, how that intersects perhaps with our, our uh, strategy for immigration, but to even just getting people trained up. Uh, give us a little bit more on your thoughts on that. I'm very enthusiastic on the idea that Canada should become a destination for talent around the world. We have a unique opportunity to be the destination for either researchers, professionals, trade people uh, who are looking for a place where they can deploy their talent. If we're smart about this, we can recruit the talent. And the key though, is to integrate them. And those countries who do it best uh, have people who come here who are fully motivated to integrate on one hand, and we as a country fully motivated to integrate them. How does that happen? It happens through a job. It happens through learning the language. It happens through integrating in a community. And learning a job and having access to a job in Canada is recognizing credentials. And I, I did a deal with France when I was Premier of Quebec the most advanced deal in the world where you're a doctor in France, doctor in Quebec, engineer in Quebec, engineer in France. And for 81 professions and trades, we should create a national platform because it is a provincial jurisdiction, right? A national platform that would allow us to recognize those qualifications and integrate people very rapidly. We could do country to country deals. We could do sector specific deals, nurses from the Philippines, for example. We could do a deal with them where it says, if you're a nurse in the Philippines, you'll be recognized as a nurse in Canada. I'm, I'm very enthusiastic at the idea that we could do that. If we get it right, we'll, we will, as a country, stand out in terms of our economic growth and our ability to increase productivity. I think you've probably had the same experience as I've had uh, in provincial politics in that there's a lot of, of folks who, in some of these trades professions, don't want to see that accessibility and that openness uh, to new professionals. So uh, what, what can we do to, to break that down a little bit? Well, we have to put a lot of pressure on those corporate interests. Right. It's, at, you know, at the worst of, of people who are blocking the access to others because they're trying to protect uh, their, their field. And it's all wrong. I mean, that's exactly the wrong approach we need. We need to apply pressure, and the provinces will need to apply a lot of pressure on them to actually say, listen, either have to open up or we are going to do it ourselves and override whatever powers they have to make it happen. When I, when I did it in Quebec, I applied a huge pressure on every one of them so that they'd be part of it. And they had to come along because they knew in the end that I wanted it to happen. But, Tony, there is one of the points about leadership right. in the country that's missing with Trudeau. Unless the leader says this is a priority and we're gonna make it happen. All these big projects, these big changes don't happen because there's so much inertia out there that you need the political will to actually make things evolve. Well, how would you assess, I mean, you, you, you're you almost in a unique position to assess Mr. Trudeau's uh, ability to work with the provinces. Uh, has that been going downhill uh, under his uh, prime ministership or are we laying too much of that at, at his feet? I think we should lay uh, all of it at his feet. He's been very divisive for the country. Um, you know, I don't, in what I've seen, I don't think there's been more than just, you know, some single provinces. And I'll give you the latest example. He does this deal with Mr. Singh on spending more money because uh, it's obvious it, for everyone, isn't it, Tony, that we all need to spend more money. I mean, as though, as though we come out of COVID and record spending and we want to spend more. And where does he want to spend? in areas of provincial right. jurisdiction. Well, guess what? You and I know it's, it's, they're talking about pharmaceutical and dental. It's not gonna happen. I can guarantee you one thing, you and I have been there and you in, in the health responsibility. Do you think the provinces are really gonna sign on to a federal proposal on dental care or pharmaceuticals knowing full well that in five years from now, they'll say there's a crisis and pull out of the program and leave the provinces right. holding the bag which is in part what's happened on healthcare in general. So I don't, Mr. Trudeau doesn't seem to know how the system works. I think one of the advantages I bring to the race, given the experience I have as someone who's been a premier, I know how this system works. It'd be a breath of fresh air in Ottawa to have a prime minister who's been there 
and has the ability to make the system work to the benefit of the country. We're going to continue our discussion with uh, the Honorable Jean Charest after the break. Of course, he's running for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. Lots to discuss. Please stay with us. We'll be back very soon.